Hello everyone, this is Taekwon from Keene, New Hampshire, and this is your Ripe Global Implantology Case Review. Today, I would like to share my patient, Roberta, who presented to my office due to tooth number nine or tooth number two one, depending on where you live, and the maxillary left central incisor was deemed unsavable. It's because of the endo lesion that developed, potentially due to fracture. And she already had, as you can see from the apical metal shadow, she actually had apical surgery in the past, and which was repaired. And unfortunately, as you can see from the buccal swelling, there was some fistula forming, and the area was kept draining over time tooth did have mobility of grade 2 plus, and I know this will be a really straightforward extraction. A lot of time, you were probably told by other people, or maybe um, Facebook or other implant training program, they say, oh, these are the very easy cases. Just take the tooth out use the granulation tissue removal curettes, clean it out, and then put some bone graft material, and then put a collagen plug or membrane, and then put some X sutures and close the day. If you do that in this case, it's a big mistake. You have to know which case is suitable for atraumatically uh, treated, uh, atraumatic minimally invasive extraction and bone graft, like without a flap, versus you have to know when you have to use conventional flap principle to open this area completely to ensure that you remove all the infected lesions. So the cases where there's an endo lesion or has a significant mobility, ironically, I know there are more infection, and because of that, I actually schedule extra time for these patients and then you'll see why. Look at the CT scan here. You can clearly see that there are complete missing of buccal plate and the radiolucency, the size of the radiolucency is much bigger than the tooth, which means there are a lot of infection and granulation tissue around this tooth. And look at the sagittal view where the buccal plate is completely missing. And th again, this is not the case that you can just do extraction and bone graft without raising flap and then leave this area open. You have to do conventional flapping with conventional guided bone regeneration. So tooth was extracted atraumatically using periotome and 150 forcep with a, just a rotational force and tooth came out atraumatically. After that, when I raised the flap, you can clearly see there's a large bony concavity or bone um, cavity. If you think you could remove all these granulation tissue without raising a flap, you're making a big mistake. If you theoretically did this without a flap and then remove some bone, uh, remove some granulation tissue and then do a traumatic bone grafting, your implant will fail so much prematurely than conventional bone grafting case. Because the reason is you will leave some granulation tissue behind, which will negatively affect the outcome of your bone graft, which means poor foundation for your implant. So after I completely remove the granulation tissue, I put bone graft, which were hydrated with platelet-derived growth factor. And you can clearly see in these kind of cases, you have to not just do socket grafting, but you have to graft beyond the socket. Why not? Because you have an access to add more bone. And as you know, people lose bone in maxilla from buccal towards palatal over time. So I want to make sure that I give enough heart tissue for this potential implant site. After that, I use cross-linked resorbable collagen membrane, which is completely tacked using a periosteal suture technique. And the membrane is completely immobilized. And this membrane will be there for about six months. And now I want to close this area completely by achieving primary closure. And I advance the flap coronally. 
coronally. Like so. You can clearly see that primary closure was obtained. And in cases like this, achieving the primary closure is the key. When you have this much large augmentation, if you leave this membrane or bone graft exposed, more chance for contamination by saliva, plaque, bacteria, and food debris. And this is the frontal view. One may say, hey, you just al altered the mucogingival junction. Yes, I did. However, I rather want to get good bone and mess up the mucogingival junction because as a periodontist, experienced surgeon, I can always recorrect this predictably using the principles of soft tissue grafting. And whenever you get a case like this and then you suspect there's a big cyst or periapical lesion, I always like to send these to pathology review so that I do ensure the patient that there was no malignancy. So this turned out as we expected as periapical granuloma. So I hope you learned something from this case. Sometimes you can be the greatest surgeon or you can have the best hand, but if you don't know how to approach certain cases, then your skill is useless. At RIPE Global Fellowship in Modern Implantology, we will teach you how to make these decisions where you want to do atraumatic flatless extraction and bone graft, where you leave the membrane and bone exposed, bone graft exposed, versus where you have to open up a flap and do more conventional guided bone regeneration. Please join us at RIPE Global Fellowship in Implantology if you'd like to learn more and do the procedure like a periodontist.